Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of our Good Shepherd. There is nothing we can do as sheep, no bad choices, no bad actions that will make God the Good Shepherd reject us or refuse us or abandon us or love us any less. There are a lot of things I have wanted in my life. I have wanted to own a home. I have wanted to have a certain amount of money in the bank. I've wanted to travel. I've wanted good friends and fun and adventures. But I have never once wanted to be a sheep. Even as a child, I did not want to be a sheep. I was never a sheep for Halloween. I was not a wolf or a bandit or a thief either. But if memory serves me correctly, I was a monkey once when I was three years old. And if you know me, that makes a lot of sense. So what is so great about being a sheep anyway? Well, if we really embrace it, there are many wonderful things about being a sheep. If, if and only if you have a good shepherd to care for you. A good shepherd supplies all our needs. A good shepherd leads me beside still waters, leads me to good pastures where all my needs are met my need to move and my need to be still, my need to be nourished, my need to spend time with other sheep, and the need to be safe from wolves and thieves and bandits, oh my. A good shepherd makes me lie down, makes me lie down. Yes, this means that the good shepherd will make me rest when I need to rest. Well, let me know that it's not just okay to take breaks, but sometimes it is truly necessary for good life. A shepherd revives my soul. A revived and restored soul, it sounds so heavenly to be spiritually and emotionally fed, to have my deep thirst quenched by springs of living water. Where do I sign up? And why don't I sign up? I think the issue I have with being a sheep is that I'm not very good at listening or following. I may not want to follow or listen, kind of like a rebel without a cause, or Shaun the Sheep, if you're familiar. I'm the kind of sheep who doesn't always want a shepherd. I'm the kind of sheep who thinks she can go it alone because she can handle things all by herself. But I have learned a few things about myself, that when I go it alone, when I wander and get lost, I sometimes end up in places I don't want to be. When I go it alone, I get tempted by flashy shepherds, the ones who promise me that I can look younger, be thinner, and have more fun if I just follow them. This has led me to spend way too much money and time on expensive facial creams and various fad diets and has led me to make some poor fashion choices. But more importantly, it's led me to make some poor personal choices. Gratefully, the Good Shepherd, my Good Shepherd, has not left me to my own devices. The Good Shepherd has come to find me when I've gotten lost and when I've gone astray. And the Good Shepherd has never expected me to be the perfect sheep. My imperfections are no surprise to the Good Shepherd because the Good Shepherd knows me better than I know myself. 
And the Good Shepherd loves and cares for me and accepts me exactly how I am, despite my faults. I do know the voice of the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd's voice sounds like peace. It sounds like stillness and rest and comfort. But sometimes it also sounds like action action to get myself out of the mess that I've gotten myself into, action that requires me to listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd with study and prayer and worship, action that sometimes requires me to get out of the way of the other sheep who are following the Good Shepherd themselves, action that calls me to care for other sheep in my community, and to go out and find sheep that have gone astray and invite them in through the wide door that is God's love. I have noticed that there is never a boss sheep or head sheep, a sheep who gets to be in charge of the other sheep, a sheep who gets to put her hands on her hips and tell the other sheep what they're doing wrong. No. That is not my job as a sheep. My job as a sheep is to listen, to really listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd, not the loud voices of the bad shepherds and the wolves and the bandits and the thieves who try to tempt me away from the right path that my shepherd has for me. The bad shepherds who tell me that I'm not good enough, that I'm not worthy, that I must somehow get my act together before the Good Shepherd and the other flock will love and accept me. No, those are the voices that lead me away from the Shepherd, the way from God, away from love. I've also noticed that there is no such thing as a self-made sheep, a sheep who can make it all on her own without help from anybody else a sheep who is successful and independent. No, that is not who sheep are. That is not how we are designed to be. We're designed to gather in a flock as a community, to stay together because there's strength in numbers and there's grace in numbers and there's love in community. Some good news I found is that sheep are also allowed to just be themselves, to graze, to rest, to listen, to follow, and to experience the fullness of love and life and joy. Sheep can be downright playful. I've seen the darndest cute videos of little lambs just jumping around, having a good old time. But I've also know that if sheep do not have someone to care for them, a good shepherd to care for them, that their wool can become so heavy that they can even drown if they fall into water. It's during those times when the waters rise that sheep are particularly glad to have a good shepherd come with their staff and pull them out of the water they've gotten themselves into and set them on solid ground, safe and sound. The good news is that the good shepherd loves the sheep, each and every one of us. The shepherd knows what is best for the sheep And the Good Shepherd protects the sheep from the dangers of this world. And it is a really dangerous world. Life as a sheep means that God, our Good Shepherd, spreads a table of blessings before us. The Good Shepherd, the gate, the door to abundant life. It means that we are blessed with oil running over our heads and our cups that are overflowing with mercy that will, and goodness that will follow us all the days of our lives. No matter where we go, goodness and mercy are following us, pursuing us like the shepherd who looks for us when we get lost. Our job is to follow, to listen, and to receive this goodness and mercy. And finally, we will find ourselves dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. This means that we dwell in the house of the Lord today, today, 
and forever. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of our Good Shepherd. There is nothing we can do as sheep, no bad choices, no bad actions that will make God the Good Shepherd reject us or refuse us or abandon us or love us any less. The Good Shepherd loves each and every one of us. The Good Shepherd knows each of us and calls us each by name. We are not nameless, faceless flock. We are individual sheep that the Good Shepherd has known since we took our very first breath. And the Good Shepherd will be with us when we take our last. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not be in want. We shall not be in need. He makes us lie down in green pastures. And God's goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.